On this episode of the Basel Journal, we go cave diving. <laughs> well, cavern. cavern diving. Cenote to be exact. So follow with us as Barbie checks off another one of her fears. researching to book the dive um, they had an option or solo buceo the shop that we went through which they're pretty amazing so we put their link down below um, if you're ever in Cancun make sure you use them as your dive shop um, they had a dive for one of the dives was cenote which is a underwater cavern and we're still trying to figure out the difference between cavern and cave yeah so if you know put it in the comments below <laughs> yeah um, so we went to, we hopped on a van that morning and drove, what, probably about 45 minutes? It was close to an hour. Yeah. Um, over, closer to Cozumel, actually, um, than we were to Cancun. Yep. And went to this place called Dos Ojos, which means two eyes, um, because there are two underwater caverns, or two eyes of this cavern that you can explore. and. And we got there early that we yes. were the first ones in the first in the divers cavern. in so nothing was silted up everything was really clear um by the time we did our second dive there were snorkelers in the snorkel part already right um but we went in the first cavern and as many of you may know i am claustrophobic it took me it, it was a lot just to learn to scuba dive for me um, and to snorkel and I overcame that and I wanted to see if I could overcome this. I've, I've uh, dove before in a cav cavern um, during our advanced open water class and went down 100 feet and Blue Grotto. was able to do that Blue Grotto here in Central Florida or there in Central Florida because we're still on Cancun right mm -hmm. um, So I wanted to try it. Um, the Dos Hojos if you've ever seen pictures on it, and you'll, you'll see throughout this video, um, you'll see throughout this vlog, that it's just beautiful inside. Um, so I wanted to overcome my fear. So knowing that, there's several places where you can escape um, if you needed to. And I actually, in the first dive, I had a little problem with my regulator. Um, it was working, I was breathing okay, but it was, it felt like it was very labored to get any air to come up. So when we got to this one section, I let our dive master know that, James is his name, and he actually grabbed me by the hand and we went up and Chuck came up with us and I thought it was, I don't know, I thought it was kind of weird that he grabbed my hand, but Chuck thought it was sweet that he was helping me out. And um, I just switched over to my, my octo and then I was fine. And, I'm, and, and, I, and the reason I was glad he did is because I know if I had taken it by her hand, she would have been in, she would have gone in even more panic because it would have been me and not the, the yeah. dive master. And I really don't think it was me panicking because um, I, I was doing fine. It's not the most comfortable dive like when we're in the open ocean because I am claustrophobic, but I was focusing more on, you know, trying to, to vlog and video down there and just some beautiful, beautiful um, and you'll stalagmites see the, and stalactites. Yeah, you'll see in the video, even though it is a cavern dive, it is pretty huge and it's pretty mm -hmm. big. There's there's only one or two spots where it even gets kind of narrow, mm -hmm. but even still, it's probably big enough for two divers to go through yes. at a time. So. Yeah, so it was wide. I mean, it was dark down there, but we all, all three of us had flashlights. And backup flashlights. <laughs> and there were other divers, too, later um, yeah. that were helping to light stuff up as well. But so. the most interesting part, though, is the very, is you, you follow the string throughout the cave. You follow the string in, follow the string out. And we do, we, do by, we do by the rule of thirds, where you get the first thousand PSI, you go in halfway, the second thousand, you come out, you got a thousand left in your tank. Mm -hmm. So the midway point, was marked with a Barbie doll <laughs> being the entire crocodile. Yeah, it was funny. So you'll see that right right now. Yeah. Um, kind of an odd thing to have down there, but no one's gonna miss the midpoint. It was the no. turnaround point. <laughs> no. Um, 
So we came back out and took a little bit of a break and then we went to the second half and the, the second eye was even more beautiful. It was a lot more open, um, which I really enjoyed that. Um, but some of, like I said, some of the, the stalagmites and stalactites, they just and the, and, the, and the light and the light reflections yes because there are a couple of open spots we can see up to, and just and the, the, the reflections of the light and stuff is just amazing i like there was one spot where you could see all of the reflections of the light the water up at the top and the stalagmites were around it and there were these plants you could see the plants right. actually growing up in the in right. the top that right. was kind of cool with the light filtering through yeah. um but you know it we checked it off our list. I probably won't be diving another cenote. Um, I may if my girls decide to want to do it. Yeah. I might do it again with them just to do it with them to see them. But cave diving, cavern diving, not really. It's, I'd rather not, be as, it's not as interesting. To and us. To us. Um, and plus, I, I, you know, the whole time I am a little uncomfortable being in there. Yeah, we'd much rather see the fish and the, and the yeah. plants and all that stuff. I mean, if you're the type of diver that likes technical challenges, then cavern diving, cave diving is for you. Um, just we're not, we tend to be on the safer side of diving. Yeah. And I'm still waiting to see my first sea turtle underwater. Yes. Until next time, go live your own story.